Good evening everybody and welcome to our transition evening video. I am really sorry that we can't invite you all into the school at this present time, but this video I hope will reassure you that we're doing our very best to make sure that your son and daughter can continue with their education and catch up on any time that has been lost at all. Each video will be bespoke to your particular child's academic year group and it will give you an opportunity to meet the key staff that are involved in supporting your child during this academic year and for us to convey that key information that is important for them and relevant to them at their particular stage in their studies. My role here is the priority is to ensure that every child is making progress in the school but also my key priority at the moment is to keep everybody safe and to keep the school operational. I am therefore asking at the beginning of this video for us to consider the situation at the moment and ask for your support with us in ensuring that all of our safety guidelines are adhered to, to talk to your child about that, to ensure that they do have a face covering when they come to school here every single day, to ensure that their journey is to travel directly to and from school. And the community police have asked me to um, convey that message, that it is really important that students aren't congregating at the end of the school day or before the school day as well. Our students here in the main have been absolutely brilliant in the way that they've adopted our safety routines, they're complying with our zones and they are wearing the face coverings in the internal spaces and they have absolutely come back bursting with enthusiasm to be back at school. As a school, we're all delighted to have them back. And that's why I want to keep the school open and operational. And that's why I really need your support in ensuring that your child fully understands the implications of our safety routines and why it absolutely is so important that we all keep to them and follow them through. Now, our learning platform has been to use extensively the Google platform and the Google Classroom. And this worked really well for us during lockdown. Since we've been back, we're continuing to post all of our work into our Google Classrooms. And this will also mean that if your child is away from school because they are self-isolating, then they should have full access to the Google Classroom and all the work that is being set to enable them to continue. The Google Classroom will also form a massive part of our contingency plan should we have to have part or a full closure. If we do have to send a bubble home, then your child can expect a combination of the Google assignments with live video recorded lessons being put into there and actually assignments that they can then continue to work on. And it will also include a combination of live lessons as appropriate. Now these will vary by year group. They will vary by the staff capacity that we have and the staff availability that we do have at these times. But all year groups will continue with their curriculum and we will support them to ensure that they can catch up and that we can cover all the essential work that they need for this year. Can I also ask that if at this moment your child doesn't have access to IT at home and you are suffering any financial difficulties, then please do contact us at the school because the government has provided additional funding for us to help those students and to help you to ensure that your child doesn't miss out on any important education as we move forward. Now, each year group will have its own specific needs for their year group. Our younger students are transitioning into secondary school and middle school is resettling in after such a period of being away. And then our exam groups are becoming a primary focus for us because obviously we're looking towards their exams in 21. As it stands at the moment, the government has not given any special consideration or concessions to the way that those examinations will be held. So it is our primary job at the moment to focus on ensuring that those students are prepared, that they're ready, that we do have the regular assessments on them and that they are fully prepared. And the year 11s and 13s especially, we will work really hard to ensure that their curriculum is not disrupted and that we can give them all the support that we can to move them on to the next stage, whether that be their sixth form, university or work. Now this is quite a difficult time, but here at school we've embraced it, we're back to normal, the students are really engaging with their lessons and it is absolutely wonderful to have the school back alive and full of students, but we want to keep it that way and we want to continue to be able to offer that level of education that we've always had. So please 
I ask for your support with our safety plans. I ask for your support in out there in the community. And I hope that this evening will really give you a sense, a further sense of the amount of work that is going on to support every year group in every different age group and to make sure that your sons and daughters are incredibly well catered for and looked after here at Rodin Valley, which is exactly what we want to continue to do. Thank you very much for listening to me and I hope that you do find the rest of these videos informative. Thank you. And, and if you do have any questions, please don't ever hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much. Let me also offer my welcome to Year 9 parents, carers and students. So we are now on um, step three of the um, three, seven year journey, seven year pathway through Roding Valley High School. Um, obviously the last year has been slightly different and where we go from here is to start thinking about the future. And throughout this uh, presentation we will be looking at some of the strategies and things we'll be doing with the students in school to support them. And also a little bit later, I will be um, introducing to you the options process. Um, so you've got a little bit of a forward idea about what that's like and what will happen later in the year. The vision for the school remains the same. We want all young people to be aspirational, respectful, and to endeavor to be the best that they can be. Ultimately, we want every student to achieve the best that they can. We want to be a school that encourages all our students to endeavour to achieve their potential and a school where, with the full support of us and of you, that your child will achieve as well as they can be and can do and achieve a positive progress score. This summer, obviously, um, there were no formal exams for Year 11 and Year 13, but Based on the calculated grades that were submitted for our students, we had um, outcomes that were significantly above the Essex and National Averages for last academic year, 2019. And as you can see from the graph, we have continued um, our upward trajectory um, in terms of um, our outcomes, both at grade four and above for English and maths and at grade five and above. Once again, grade four remains the level that students must achieve without needing to reach English and Maths post 16, but the grade five will be known as a strong pass and is equivalent to a high C or low B on the old grading system. We're incredibly proud of all our year 11s, but there were some exceptional performances. And as you can see from here, here are the top 10 in terms of the number of grade nines, grade eights and grade sevens that they achieve. Remembering that grade nine is a very top and percentage of students who have achieved a grade seven or above. Likewise, the grade um, seven is the equivalent of an old A um, in that grading system. Year 13 was no different, and we had a number of successes there with students traveling off to university, um, Mashra to Imperial, Maisha to um, Skidmore College in New York, and Alex, um, off to Warwick University to study maths. But it's not just about the um, A-levels taking them to university. It, it also is about opening up high level apprenticeships as well. And there we have a number of our students who have gone on to um, study um, either sponsored degrees with Hill like Tanim and Harry or um, gone on to high level apprenticeships like Sam and Luke. And also Hannah, who's gone off to do, do a legal secretary course as well. Many of our year 13s also went off to university um, and here are just a few of them. Um, a wide variety of places that they've gone to study a variety of courses and we wish them all the very best in their future at university and the courses that they have studied. Now let me take a moment to um, introduce the people who will be supporting your child over the next year and um, beyond. So obviously myself, Mr Mammon, uh, Miss Dyer, the other deputy head teacher, Miss Larkin, Mr. Vermark, Mr. Price, the um, assistant head teachers, uh, Mr. Dobson, the year progress leader, and Mrs. Collins, who oversees literacy and works as part of the teaching and learning team. 
Hello there, uh, my name is Miss Larkin and I'm Assistant Head Teacher at Roman Valley High School for Teaching and Learning. So I'm just um, sort of speaking to you today as part of your transition presentation, just to keep you guys up to speed with what goes on in the classroom and what your son or daughter will be experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. And I just want to make sure that I get across that our two main areas of focus remain just as they have been over the past couple of years with our ACE framework, which is what we base all of our lessons on. And that idea that we teach all of, our, all of our lessons right to the top, we pitch them really high and we scaffold to support students that need it. And obviously that really, really helps support the progress that our students make on a day to day basis. Again, just a reminder, really, as to what goes on in the classroom. We've still got a massive emphasis on our teaching and learning ambassadors. We still nominate those in our lessons to get them to take those leadership roles on board. We still have our green pen marking. It's a big part of our stable equipment at Roden Valley where students act on the verbal feedback from the teachers that are giving them lesson and act on their work using their green pen. And do it now is a huge part of our lessons to get those students hooked into those tasks. We've got our AFL, our assessment for learning ideas, with our RAG cards, our traffic light system, and of course our really, really important closing the gap tasks after students receive feedback from their teachers after every assessment window. Now, just on that closing the gap, I just want to raise your attention to this, that closing the gap is always done and the tasks that are based on closing the gap are always done on a yellow piece of paper and they're always kept inside books or folders or maybe even now potentially stored on Google Classroom. So do keep a lookout for those as parents because they give that really, really crucial feedback to students to help them move on um, to the next level after an assessment. We also have our tried and tested revision techniques that go in our classroom on a day to day basis, which I will be talking to you about in more detail and retrieval. That idea that we are testing our students constantly on the previous knowledge that they should have learnt to try and keep it in the forefront of their minds. So in terms of what you guys can do now as parents to help your son or daughter at this really, really crucial stage um, in their education, I've just got a few handy tips for you and just a few um, resources really that I want to share with you all that you can find on our website. So first of all, you're probably very familiar with this and it is obviously Google Classroom. Now you're probably all aware that we heavily relied on Google Classroom during our lockdown period. Um, we stored all of our individual subject resources on there. We put all our lesson material on there. And we, of course, included our video recorded instruction on there as well to ensure that students can engage with learning even whilst being at home. Now, to keep that consistency, we've retained Google Classroom. And rather than using Show My Homework to record homework, we are now putting all of our home learning onto Google Classroom. Um, so essentially, it's so important that students know how to use this. And it's really, really important that they're in a routine of checking their Google Classroom, checking what assignments have been posted, when they need to hand it in. But more importantly, seeing that feedback that they'll get from their teachers off the back of the home learning that they submit. If you want to find out more about Google Classroom, if you want some step by step guidance, or you'd like to see the codes for each classroom that your son or daughter is meant to be in, then please do access our home learning booklet. The home learning booklet is under the home learning tab um, on our website. And there's also a really, really helpful YouTube link there um, to a video that I recorded a couple of weeks ago on frequently asked questions about Google Classroom. And please do access that. I give a little talk through essentially of all the best ways of using this fantastic tool. And um, just whilst I'm on Google Classroom, I just want to take this opportunity to quickly mention three key things. First things first, all homework tasks that are set to be done at home after a normal school day are all clearly labelled as assignments. These assignments have a due date, they have clear instruction, and they have an option to hand in the work off the back of this assignment. That's what students should be doing on top of the work that they do in school. A second tier to this is if your son or daughter is self-isolating for any reason and they still need to access the work that's being taught in school, then we have decided to start storing this on Google Classroom too, so it's all in the same place, and we store this as material. 
This material is essentially, as I've just explained, it's the lesson content that your son or daughter would have learned in school, but potentially they're at home self-isolating, so therefore they can't access school at this present time. So all teachers are regularly uploading their material to their Google Classroom so that your son or daughter can access it if they need to. I also want to take this opportunity to remind everybody that students are to submit any work they've completed at home, either it being um, a home learning task they do at home or if they're self-isolating, then we would really like them to hand it in on Google Classroom too. We're trying to get a system where everything is done in the same place. And again, if your son or daughter is unsure about how to hand their work in on Google Classroom, then please do look at the YouTube clip that I previously mentioned that's on our website under the Home Learning tab. One last thing on Google Classroom, if you'd like to be linked to your child's account, then I can do that for you. All you need to do is email me your child's full name and their year group and the email account that you would like me to link that belongs to you so that you can see all the home learning assignments that your son or daughter is being set. So please do let me know if you would like to be linked to your child's account. So a few more things that I just want to take a moment to mention then, a few more resources that you guys can tap into to really support the learning um, of your child. So just obviously I've already talked through Google Classroom, but I'm just going to talk about um, some things that are on our website. Please do take, them, take a moment to access some of our fantastic reading lists that all sit on our website at present. Every subject has a reading list, and this reading list is closely linked to the curriculum content that's taught in school and it all flows in order of what they study at what time. Okay, so there's a nice little example on the screen there of the English academic reading list and we've got little subtopics on there so that students can see what they're learning at present and what they can read then at home to get themselves thinking um, a bit more in detail about their subject. I also wanted to um, take this time to mention to you that all of our Rosen Valley High School revision and study techniques are also stored on our website. Again, on our website, please go to revision and you'll find a tab there and you'll find all of our revision resources. You'll find templates, you'll find step-by-step -step guidance, and you'll also find the presentation that I gave to all students last academic year as part of our revision workshop. Again, all of these things we're trying to embed into our home learning program, but it'd be really, really great if parents can have access to all of this and know all those things that we're trying to encourage our students to do. And this is just a little example of what you'll find on our website. You'll find a list of all the techniques that we teach in school, a bit of a run through on how to deliver it as well, and then some examples, as you can see there too. So again, um, just linking to what I've just said about how you can get started. One of the best things that you can do now whilst you're um, in the year group that you're in is start to think about how you can push that home learning further and how you can turn all that fantastic stuff that you do in lesson into a piece of revision using all the fantastic revision guidance that's available on our website. So I'm going to end there. Thank you so much for listening. If you've, any, if you've ever got any questions about what goes on in the classroom from a teaching and learning point of view or about home learning, then please do get in touch with me. Um, as I said previously, my name is Miss Larkin and my email is on the screen now, plarkin at rodinvalley.net. I wish your son and daughter all the luck um, going forward into this academic year and I hope they have a fantastic year with us at Rodin Valley. Thank you for listening. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm just going to spend a few moments talking to you about the curriculum and what the students will be studying and also um, the options that will come later in the year. So as a reminder, the curriculum is now um, um, nine to one. There are no more A star to G grades. With these reformed GCSEs comes increased challenge. There is no coursework. There is a spelling, um, punctuation and grammar focus. And then following on from that, it is um, harder now at A-level. Again, they've been reformed with no coursework, etc. It is a five-year curriculum. So building up to year 11 from year seven, and there is no quick catch-up. So it's really important that the students focus on their studies and um, work with their teacher to close any gaps that they identify. The keys to being successful, 
The students need to be independent learners, so they need to be working at home and doing their homework as independently as they can. They need to develop resilience because sometimes things won't always go to plan. They won't always be able to um, answer a question instantly and they need to um, develop the skills that we will work with them to develop that resilience and to um, help them to know how to find an answer if it's not immediately um, visible. They need to make the use of the support available in subject areas, consult with their teachers and they must read widely. And it's really important that with all those bits coming together, it will help them to be as successful as they can be. Parents, it's really important and I really encourage you to take an interest in what they are studying. Ask them at the end of the day, what did you learn today? How was that? Develop discussions because actually that's really going to help them as they move forward towards their GCSE courses. Start to discuss potential careers with them because that might have an influence on what courses they study for GCSE. But most importantly, support them when they will fail or if they get something wrong. Because actually, um, failure is not a problem, it's how we learn from it. And I really encourage you to support them when maybe they come home, they've not had a great lesson, or maybe a test has not gone as well as they hoped, and how we build from there. We have asked um, the year um, nine curriculum teachers and subject teachers to put together this some information for you. Now, obviously, after this was put together, things have changed a little bit. So we will be reviewing this and um, sharing this with you um, over the next um, few weeks. So, as I said, um, I wanted to spend a few moments just talking to you about what the um, pathways for the options look like. Now, as a core, every student does maths, English, English language, English literature, and at least combined science. And then the majority of students will either study geography or history. And then they do um, an hour a week of core non-GCSE PE. And then we effectively split our pathways into two. Um, pathways one and two, or the red pathways, um, where students have the opportunity in pathway one to study triple science, which is identified by um, the science teachers. Um, we encourage um, students in those um, pathways to then do a modern foreign language to give them the breadth of study and um, open many doors for them. And along with um, geography or history, they will then qualify or achieve the set of subjects known as the EBAC, which is English, Maths, Science, um, a Humanity or Geography or History and a Modern Language. And that accounts for um, well over half of the students in the year group. And then our pathway three or um, four, which are um, our green pathways, um, are where students are encouraged to study the EBAC, but they don't have to do the language. And then pathway four, for a small number of students, um, we run a slightly bespoke curriculum where they do um, additional studies to support maths and English and maybe science if it's appropriate to that group of students. So how do we put our um, pathways together? Well, R Red A, the triple scientist, is nationally roughly the top 25% of the cohort or of students. Red B, um, students we feel are more capable of a traditional EBAC group through education, enabling um, future choices, like I said, to keep that breadth open. Green A, opportunity to achieve the EBAC, but recognising that there might be different learning styles. And then Green B, increased opportunity to achieve good GCSE grades in English, Maths and Science. From the offset, um, no subject is not available to any student. The only one would be Triple Science, um, because that is by um, invitation or recommendation by the science staff. And then Computer Science or IT, is um, based on um, teacher recommendation and um, based on what's most appropriate. But we'll explain more about that when we have our options evening in the spring. Just things to consider over the next few months whilst you're thinking about the options. What subjects does your child enjoy or they tell you that they enjoy? What subjects are they going to do well in? How do they like to learn? Some courses that we offer um, have regular assessment, others exams at the end. What do they want to be when they are older? If my child is given one of the reserve choices, 
Does it all still work? Of course it does. When we ask for reserves, it's really important that um, it's a subject that your child wants to um, do. What do my child's teachers think? Well, we're going to have um, the opportunity in the spring um, to have some kind of um, discussion about um, options with um, subject teachers. Now, obviously, things are a little bit restricted at the moment, but we hope to be able to do something, even if it's online, to have those discussions. And as students, what do your parents think? Have that discussion with them. We will always aim to um, accommodate every student's choices. Um, if they are given a reserve, it's because there's um, been too much Just some things to consider um, over the next few months whilst we um, prepare, if you like, for the um, options process in the spring. What subjects does your child enjoy? What subjects are they doing well in? Maybe things that they want to consider. We do have new subjects that they won't have studied before, but thinking about the ones they are currently doing, how do they like to learn? Some courses are more coursework based and um, assessed all the way through others more exam based assessed at the end which is better for them ultimately what do they want to be when they're older what choices do they need to make they're going to open up those pathways in the future and then also what do the child's teachers think now obviously um, you haven't necessarily had much interaction with their teachers face to face over the last few months we are hoping to do something even if it's online um, in the spring for um, parents evening if not sooner but also, if you've got questions, maybe post an email to the child's teacher, ask them how they're getting on and what you think. And also, students, what do your parents think? What do your carers think? Explore it with them a little bit more. The question is, how much homework? Students should be spending roughly one to two hours um, of work a week. That's 40 to 60 minutes per subject across um, the, the um the subjects they do. Please encourage them if they haven't got work set to go online, explore some of the things that are there and we will be talking about that with them and Miss Larkin will also have explored that with them um, previously as well. Hello Year 9 parents, although you won't understand this is probably my uh, 56th time of trying to record um, what should be quite a simple thing. Um, which is our virtual transition evening, but I've got to get it right. Okay, thank you to my esteemed colleagues who spoke to me, spoke to you guys previously. If you're watching this in the morning, good morning. Watching it in the afternoon, good afternoon. And if you're watching it in the evening, good evening. And thanks for joining us on this uh, excellent presentation. I'm going to go through some specifics um, about our expectations, and they remain the same to the expectations we had for year seven and eight, and when I was also the progress leader encourage independence, become responsible, well-rounded citizens for the 21st century, and get the relevant skills to achieve the highest attainment. Key dates. You may well be looking at these and thinking, well, will these go ahead? Well, the virtual parents' evening, virtual options evening, they're the kind of things that we can produce uh, without realising or without relying on any COVID-19 restrictions. The exams, obviously, we can also do those online, do those at school. So these dates are pretty much set in stone and we look forward to assessing and showing the progress of the students and going through the options evening with you come February. Period one, culture and culture. These are the things for the autumn term, something that in year eight, we certainly moved forward and it became a very massive success for the school. Um, and as you can see this year, there's our slightly different themes. Um, for example, next week is resilience and the week after that is bereavement. These continue to be provided and to be taught by the, the mentors, academic mentors. You may still see them as their tutor, but we change the title. And these are informations that are vital to the way that the students start their day. Careers also, believe it or not, it feels like about 10 minutes since um, the children were starting in year seven. But the Careers is a vital part of year nine learning to give them a stable careers program, learning from career and labour market and addressing the needs of each pupil. This will provide students with an idea about not necessarily, they don't necessarily go into this saying I want to be, but it gives them an idea about what they can achieve if they achieve good GCSEs and maybe go to A-level or college or apprenticeships. 
give them an idea of what's out there as they progress into year 10 next year. So careers, what students will face and As we move further through the 21st century, students and employees will not necessarily be looking for how many qualifications the student that has, but as we looked at this quote here, employees will look for people who are rigorous, rounded and grounded. They'll be looking at personal qualities that students have. And obviously here at Rodin Valley High, we will be providing the students with this by character and culture. And also, you, if you marry in the quality of the students, behavior and attitude towards life, and then you put that with some excellent exam results, they are somebody that an employer will certainly want as part of their team. The health system remains in place. Obviously, we will be COVID-19 dependent on what we can produce here, but as you noticed during lockdown, there was lots of activities. Um, virtual activities, particularly sports activities that were based on the house system. And also in the next few weeks, there's opportunities. And please look at the bulletin for your children um, to get involved with leadership aspects of these houses. And uh, that's an exciting opportunity for all of them. Just a reminder about how the day looks at the moment. If you scan over to the year nines, they will arrive at 8.30 or they are arriving at 8.30 and line up at 8.35 on the um, Tennis courts, and then period two, you've got a break, and they finish early at 2.50. Just please look at this and make sure that you familiarise yourself with it as we move forward through the autumn term. Opportunities to get involved with this autumn term, once again, it's COVID-19 pending. We will have student voice, which will definitely go ahead, and subject leaders around the school will definitely go ahead. We still have students who are guides and volunteers for anybody who wants a tour around the school, but at the moment, that obviously can't happen. But if the COVID-19 restrictions get a little bit looser, we can still use some of our guides. Extracurricular activities may well be more virtual than actual. And even things such as the Jack Petchy Awards, academic lectures, debate club, are certainly things that you will be able to see virtually on things like we're doing here or even Microsoft Meet. University visits, once again, could be virtual. I know a lot of universities have put things on their websites where you can go through and see what they provide. Drop down days, that's something that could also be virtual. And uh, it'd be interesting to see how the Duke of Edinburgh scheme um, moves forward as well, because if the COVID-19 restrictions remain the same, there's no reason why uh, Group 6 students can't be involved in something that uses some of the Duke of Edinburgh skills. Helping your child make the best start to their GCSE course. The reality is a tense time. This is as we move forward through this year. A lot of the students will start to think, like I said, we're in year nine and need to start thinking about options. Their GCSEs start in less than a year's time. It's a very tense time. Support, guidance, talking to the students, Pressure, the amount of work expected and needed is greater. Students step up to the challenge. Parents challenge your children. This is the time when you need to look at the reality. Students need to literally go up a gear. Many of them, I know some of the students maybe cruised a little bit in year eight. Year nine is a very important year in preparation for their GCSEs. Please make sure every child has access to Google Classroom. How can we help? As a school, we're going to provide a positive attitude and positive reinforcements. That means we're continuing with our ARE points that we provide to the students per lesson and how they behave themselves through a school day. We will obviously boost confidence daily, celebrate and all successes and reward them, set realistic expectations, show how proud of them we are. And that was a constant thing that I've noticed in the last few weeks. It's been fantastic how the students have really evolved and adapted to the new situation and give them belief in themselves. Well-being, vitally important, something as we've seen through lockdown, there's a lot of information at the moment about making sure students' well-being is um, at the highest. Maintain that healthy diet. Students need to be active, a lot more difficult during autumn and winter, but going for long walks, going for a run, um, Saturday and Sunday will maintain their fitness. Monitor social media, bones, phones and video games. My door is always open. If you have any questions, obviously just email me. I'm very more than happy to, to talk you through anything that you have. Social media and cyberspace. 
so far been quite lucky in the last four weeks we've had not too much about issues of social media and cyberspace and i miss the price is talking to the students via assemblies about this during lockdown quite a few of the parents did contact me about these issues the big question is do you know if your child's account is open or closed is your child child age appropriate for some of these places are you are you using computer in room where you can walk past and view what they are doing are you keeping the communication channels about these social network sites open are you a friend of your child on any of these sites so you can see actually what your child is texting or being involved in the importance of being in school on time as always it is vitally important and now during covid 19 restrictions it's even more so during lessons Lessons students are told about any meetings and events, so please make sure the children are queuing up outside at least at 8.30, ready to come in through the gates at 8.35. It's vitally important because all meetings, events and opportunities will be provided during this period between 8.35 and 9. You will meet one member of staff who will see them every day. That's their person. They are, that's their continuity. That's the person that they will get to know. And they will also receive their character and culture education. And every Monday, they get one of my virtual assemblies. And hopefully, as the term goes on, I'll become more and more effective at it. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. I hope we have managed to um, answer any questions that you may have had. But if not, please remember that we are here to help you. And if you've got any questions, please do contact um, the following. If it's a subject problem, please contact the subject teacher, head of faculty or head of department. General issues, please contact the academic mentor um, or form tutor, as you may have thought about it previously. Uh, progress issues, please come to myself, Mr. Vermark, Mr. Dobson, Ms. Dyer, Mr. Price. Careers, if there's anything you want to discuss ahead of the options, please contact Mrs. Mason. And obviously, if it's attendance, please contact Mrs. Lowe. If the students are worried about things, and I understand coming back in at this time of year, it's um, all new, especially with the time we've been out of school. Please do contact Mr. Dobson, Ms. Dyer, Mr. Price, in fact, anyone. Please do keep in touch with us. We are here to help. Do make sure we have the correct email for you as obviously that's one of our prime ways of communicating. Thank you very much.